hi everyone welcome back to this channel in the last few videos we have been discussing about probabilities of a one dimensional box in today's video we will discuss about some of the important integrals that you encounter while solving quantum mechanics problems before that if you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe for more videos the first integral with a broad application in quantum mechanics is the gaussian function a typical Gaussian function is described by the equation y equal to e raised to minus ax square. A Gaussian function has a familiar bell-shaped curve. Let us visualize what happens if we change the variables associated with the Gaussian function, that is y equal to e raised to minus ax square. Now I am going to increase the value of a from 1 to 10. Let us see what happens. Here we can see that when the value of a is increased, the width of the Gaussian curve is narrowed. If the value of a is decreased, the Gaussian curve becomes wider and wider. When we integrate the Gaussian from minus infinity to plus infinity, what we actually get is the area under this curve. So when the value of a is increased, the area under the Gaussian curve is decreased. And when the value of a is decreased, the area under the curve is increased. Now, let us multiply the Gaussian equation y equal to e raised to minus a x square with a constant. Here I am multiplying with the number 2. If we look at the curve, we can see that the maximum point on the curve which was initially at 1 has now shifted to the point 2. So whenever you are multiplying a Gaussian with a constant, the amplitude of the Gaussian curve becomes the constant times the initial amplitude. Now let us add a constant with the Gaussian function. Here I am adding 1. So the expression has become 1 plus e raised to minus ax square. Now if you look at the curve, we can see that initially the curve was at y equal to 0. Now the whole curve has been shifted to y equal to 1. e raised to minus ax square is a Gaussian curve whose center is at x equal to 0. Now if I wish to change the center from x equal to 0 to x equal to 1, what I have to do is replace the x in the Gaussian expression with x minus 1. So we will get a Gaussian curve which will be centered at x equal to positive 1. Now if we want to change the center from 1 to minus 1, what we have to do is we have to replace the x with x plus 1. So we will get a Gaussian curve whose center has been shifted to minus 1 from 1. Let us move on to the integration of these Gaussian expressions. The integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to minus a x square dx is equal to under root pi by a, where a is the coefficient of x square. Most problems in quantum mechanics will have the constant factor as a by 2 in the exponential term. So by substitution, we are able to easily show that integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to minus a x square by 2 dx equal to under root 2 pi by a. Now let us differentiate both LHS and RHS of this equation with respect to a. Then we get my integral minus infinity to plus infinity x square e raised to minus a x square dx equal to under root pi divided by 2 into a power 3 by 2. By repeated differentiation, it is easy to show that integral minus infinity to plus infinity x power 2n into e raised to minus a x square dx equal to under root pi into 2n minus 1 factorial divided by 2 power n into a power n plus 1 by 2. The value of n can range from 1, 2, 3 and so on. We can see that this equation will always be 0 if the power of x is odd because the integrand is odd in x and the integration limits are even. Let us take a closer look at this point by considering an example function x cube. If I plot the function x cube, the graphical representation of the function x cube looks like this. This curve is not symmetric about x-axis, so it is an odd function. Now, I am multiplying x cube with the Gaussian e raised to minus ax square. Here we can see the graph of this product. There is a negative part and there is a positive part, which will easily cancel out when we integrate with the limits minus infinity to plus infinity. So, whenever the power of x is an odd, then the integral minus infinity to plus infinity x power n e raised to minus ax square dx will be equal to 0. 